Okay, let's continue working on the first app tutorial. So I'm going to go to developer.android.com and under developers, training, and building your first app. Now we've already done the first couple of steps. We've built our app and uh, hopefully you've tried running it as well. So we're going to go ahead and build a simple user interface in this tutorial. And uh, once again, I'm going to follow along pretty closely with the tutorial, but there are a few gotchas along the way because of differences in the current version of Android Studio. So I'll try to point those out as we go. So there's some introductory text that explains the user interface model. Basically, there are views, which are um, user interface elements like buttons and text boxes and radio buttons and so on. And then there are view groups that lay out these views. So for example, if you have individual radio buttons, you might have a radio button group that organizes them. Or you might have user interface elements like a text box that are laid out in a particular order. And the view group would be the layout. The elements would be either text box, button, maybe a radio group that had radio buttons in it, and so on. So it's a sort of hierarchical tree structure that creates your ultimate user interface. And we're going to start with the first app that we've created in the previous tutorial. And uh, the first thing it wants us to do is to edit our activity under my.xml. Now, here's one of the differences. In our application, it's actually called activity under main.xml. So I'm going to double click on that to open it. And the tutorial is assuming that you're going to start with this text view here. And uh, you might see it, it might look like this with the uh, preview showing. So if the preview is showing, it tells you to close the preview, which you can do by clicking on that button. And if you want to get it back later on, it's easy. Go to Tools window, Tool Windows, and go to Preview, and there it is. So it's easy to recover from. So we're going to go ahead and uh, delete the text view element, which is the part that says, Hello, Mark. And then we're going to change this relative layout to a linear layout. And then you can use tab for command completion. Now, the way XML works is if you have a tag that starts here and ends here, these two tags have to match. So linear layout starts the tag, and then slash linear layout should end the tag. So I'm just going to change this to linear. And now I have correctly formatted XML. So there's going to be this whole thing is one tag. And these are known as attributes. So we're mainly going to be creating tags and editing attributes. And then tags can either be scoped, like here, where you have an opening tag and a closing tag. Or you can have single tags that end in slash close angle bracket. And we'll see both kinds in this tutorial. So I've changed the relative layout to a linear layout. It wants me to add an Android orientation and set it to horizontal. So I'm going to reformat this a little bit just to make my life easier. I'm going to put each of these on a separate line. White space is not significant in XML. And I'm going to add an Android colon orientation. And I'm going to set it to horizontal. Now I'm going to remove the padding attributes and the tools context attribute. So I'm just going to delete these four padding lines and also delete this tools context. And uh, so here's the result. Let's see if it matches more or less. Actually, it looks pretty good. Um, so linear layout is going to be a view group that contains other views. And uh, 
this particular view out is going to lay them out in a line. That's what the linear part is. And it's going to lay them out in a horizontal line across the screen. I could use a vertical layout, and then it would lay them out in a line from top to bottom. OK, so these two layout width and layout height attributes that we just added what they're going to do is they're going to take this entire linear layout and they're going to expand them to fill whatever the container for this linear layout is, which is going to be the drawing area of our app. So basically this whole layout is going to fill the entire window under the menu bar. And then everything inside of this is going to be distributed horizontally across the screen. And moving on, we're going to create a text, a text field. So let's walk through this one step at a time. So the first thing we want to do is create an edit text item. And I'm going to tab this to show that it's inside of the linear layout. And when I hit tab here, it fills out a lot of stuff. So I get to specify layout width, layout height. And this one, it's asking us to use wrap content. So I'm going to type wrap content. And I'm also going to add a wrap content here. And then it's asking for an attribute, an ID attribute, which is set to this. So let's go ahead and add that. So at sign plus, and then this is an ID slash edit under text. And I'll tell you what this does in a second. Make sure I got it right. Edit message, I'm sorry. All right, so this at sign means that we're going to be referring to a resource, a string resource, or actually an ID resource in this case and that the name of this ID resource is edit underscore message. So that's what this at sign means. And then this plus is used the first time that you go ahead and create a new resource. This will automatically create the resource. So um, if you don't do this plus sign, you're going to get an error because the edit message resource isn't created yet. Go ahead and add that. So this will cause a new ID to be generated and added to the appropriate resource file. And we've added the layout width and layout height already. And we're going to add a hint attribute as a string object named edit message. So hint is going to be a resource which is a string, and the name is going to be edit message. And now you'll notice that I'm getting this highlighted here. That's because I didn't put a plus. Um, and I'm going to have to add that to the strings XML, but that's going to be in the next step. So don't worry about the fact that this is highlighted yet. Now you'll notice also that I have an ID named edit message, and I also have a string named edit message. Um, these are two separate things because this is under IDs and this is under string. So even though they have the same name, it doesn't cause a conflict. Now, I personally don't consider this to be very good coding, coding style because uh, um, it's nice to be able to look at the name of something and know what it corresponds to. And if you're just looking at edit message, well, you don't really know what it's referring to. But following along with the tutorial, so let's see if we have what, uh, so ID, edit message, wrap content, and edit message. So it looks good so far. And uh, here's the explanation of what's going on. So we're going to add the string resource uh, for our edit message. So I'm going to pop open strings.xml. And I'm just going to type the same thing you see for these other ones, string name equal edit under message. And then I'm going to add the string enter a message. So this is going to be the text that shows up 
and the edit box by default. I'm sorry, it should be enter. So when I launch the application, it's going to have an edit text box in it, and it's going to initially have the value enter a message um, until I click on it and start typing. And then I'm also going to have a send button on there, so I'm going to add another string with the ID button send, with the name button send. And this is just going to say send in it. And I don't need this hello world string anymore, which I changed to hello mark. Now, um, this one looks a little different from ours because um, this one has a title, activity, main predefined. That's another difference in Android Studio. Let me explain that. So if I go to the application, I'm sorry, the Android Manifest, you'll see that it has some string resources in it as well. So this little green thing, if I hover over it or click on it, it shows me the actual value. So there's a string app name under the application label, and there's also a string app name, which is the same string under the activity label. And in the current version of Android Studio, the default is to have both of these things be the same. In an earlier version, the default was to have a separate app name versus title activity main. So consequently, we only have one of them here because this one's doing double purpose. So now we've added our strings, we're gonna go ahead and add a button to our layout. So I'm gonna go back to our activity main and add a button. And once again, it's going to give me a bunch of stuff to fill in. So I'm going to wrap content here as well. And wrap content here. Now I don't need to give this one an ID because I'm not going to refer to it inside the program. Basically this ID here is how I'm going to be able to refer to this user interface element inside of my code. And I'm not actually going to refer to this button anywhere. I need to refer to the text box because I want to get the value of whatever the user typed into the text box. But I'm not going to need to refer to the button because when the user clicks on the button, that's going to cause some code to get run directly. So I don't need to specify an ID here. I could specify, specify an ID if I wanted, but I don't need one. So I've done the wrap context. Now the text is going to be whatever text is going to show up in the box. And I want to set its value to the button send string that I created in strings.xml. So Android colon text is equal to the resource button send. So now my button is going to have the label send on it. And let's take a look. So everything looks good. The order of these attributes doesn't matter. And uh, now I have something I can actually run. So let me go ahead and run this. I already have Jenny Motion running. If you don't have Jenny Motion running, you can click on the Jenny Motion Device Manager and start it. Or you can go ahead and Go to the Android Virtual Device Manager and launch your virtual device. Or you can plug in your actual Android tablet, run it there. So I'm just going to go ahead and run what I have now. So Gradle is the build system, and it's going ahead and compile all of my code and resources. And I'm going to run it on the debugger. And so I have my message box with the text enter a message. I have my first app and I have a, a button with a send label, but none of these elements actually do anything. 
I can click on enter a message and I can start typing. And you'll see when it's empty, it says enter a message in gray. When I type, it goes away. So that's going to be a prompt message. And that's pretty much all our app does so far. So let's get out of it. Now you'll notice, actually, you'll notice when I run this app, which is uh, my first app. Yep. So it sort of squished off into the corner. If we wanted to fill the available space, we want to make this bigger. And so the next part is going to be attaching a weight to this user interface element so that it expands to fill the available space. So let's see how to do that. We're going to basically just add an Android layout weight attribute and we're going to specify an initial size that 0 dp. So what is that? Okay. Yeah, so this layout weight is going to be 1. So 1 for the text box and 0 by default for everything else, which means that this is going to basically end up being 100%. And then the layout width is going to be the default size. And 0 dp is basically dp stands for device independent pixels. And uh, we'll be talking about these more later. But the basic idea here is that your app should look pretty much the same no matter what device you're running it on, whether you're running on a high resolution device that has 2000 by whatever pixels or a low resolution device that has 800 by 600 pixels or whatever, you should have roughly the same layout. And the way you do that is by expressing sizes in terms of device independent pixels. So one device independent pixel, one DP might get mapped to one actual pixel or it might get mapped to two and a half actual pixels or four pixels or, or whatever. So it's basically a way of specifying coordinates that are independent of the actual device that you're using. And the net of this is that by specifying zero DP, it's going to just use our layout weight and be fairly efficient at doing that calculation. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to add to my text box, I'll put them over here. So the layout weight is going to be one. And actually, I already have a layout width. So I'm just going to edit this existing layout width attribute and change this to zero dp. Okay, and now when I run my app, So now you see this is expanded to fill the entire width except for the space that's required for this button. Okay, so that's it for this part. In the next part, we'll actually be hooking our user interface elements up to the code so that our app does something.